Today I'm going to talk about feng shui shoes. Now, the whole concept of shoe psychology is about feng shuiing your psychological shoe closet. And I don't know if I've really made it clear enough like what that's all about. Um, sometimes you actually have to physically look at your cupboards, don't you? And the reason that I do this, like some people go, why do you keep going on about shoes? Why does it always have to be shoes, shoes, shoes? And the reason, there is a psychology behind it, believe it or not. So I just wanted to get clear so that, you know, you can get an idea of like, okay, I am consciously doing my feng shuiing of my psychological shoe closet. Because I know as mumpreneurs, as mums, as, you know, ladies of the world, we are so overwhelmed that when, when people aren't so much overwhelmed, we become like little hamsters in in those wheels you know we just go round and round in little circles like that don't we and i gotta tell you not helpful because that's when life is happening to you not for you okay like you know you you're not taking charge life is happening to you okay so when that that when you're in that hamster wheel and it, it just becomes grind after grind after grind and that's exactly what happens with with mums particularly like you know you become everything to everybody don't you and then suddenly you go where am I in all of that you know like what about me and what about my needs and we always put our needs at the bottom you know of the list and I want us to to you know it's not about not being there for your kids it's not about not being there for your family and your friends etc it's about biffing out the things that aren't working for you like get, let's get rid of the bits that aren't working so imagine you look into your shoe closet um, or just a closet, just open your door and you go, wow, I actually only wear 20% of these clothes right here. I could actually biff like 80% of my cupboard. Now that's the 80-20 principle of the Pareto principle. I don't know if you know about that, but um, we use it a lot in business uh, where, you know, 80%, 80 uh, of your business comes from 20% of your clients, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, it's a, it's a well-known concept. You can look it up if you want, P-A-R-E-T-O, Pareto principle, but it's not just in relation to business. It's, it's with everything in life. So what you'll find is that, you know, uh, there's a whole batch of stuff that we can get rid of. And that's why, why I'm so pedantic about, you know, what are the shoes that you want? What shoes are working for you? What shoes aren't working for you? Um, you know, what shoes were you forced to wear? What shoes do you like to wear? What shoes do you feel like you have to wear? So you can actually go, do you know what? I don't want that. And you can biff it out. You go, right, you may not be ready to biff out 80% of your cupboard, right? But if you feng shui, even 40% of that, like heart or 50% of the, the stuff that you don't need, if we can relieve ourselves of that overwhelm, we can go, oh, fantastic. So just getting clear about who you are is going to make it easier for you to move forward on your path. Because if you don't know what you, you want, somebody goes, well, maybe you want to be this. And you go, oh, yeah, maybe I do. And away you go. And then you find, well, actually, no, that's not what I want to do. As soon as you are clear about who you are, you're going to be finding it a lot easier to choose the path that you want to be on, right? And you only do that when you get clarity about What's in your shoe closet, your psychological shoe closet? Who am I? How do I operate? What works for me? What floats my boat? What doesn't float my boat? What do I want to keep? What do I not want to keep? And when you start peeling, throwing away all the stuff that, that excess, your life becomes so much clearer. Like it's, it's like black and white. Like somebody will come along. When you know what your Enneagram type is, when you know what your, um, you know, if you're towards away from, you know, lab profile stuff, all the stuff that I teach, okay? When you know uh, what's the other things that are, that are your attachment style, um, et cetera, et cetera. Once you've learned all of that stuff, you start going, somebody comes across, so say for example, I'll give you an example. Say you are, um, and I'll give it in terms of like business. Okay, someone says, right, you are, um, you know, I want you to come and work in as an accounting uh, or bookkeeping for my business. Um, and I'm going to put you in the back room and you're just going to be in count. Now, if you are a person who 
hates numbers, who is not into detail, you're the bigger picture, who is people oriented, not thing oriented, who is proximity oriented where you want to have the team around you or people around you not being isolated in a room, okay, and uh, where it's outdoors in nature, you now know that if somebody offers you that, even if it's a good salary, you're going to go, do you know what, that, does, that part does not work for me, baby. That does not work for me. So this is the clarity that you get by doing the psychological shoe closet and feng shuiing of your shoe closet so that you can go, do you know what, that is me, that's not me. That is me, that's not me. It becomes very black and white and so much simpler. So you see these overwhelm in confusion. You know, do I want that? Do I not? You become indecisive. It gives you clarity. It gives you certainty. It gives you <clears throat> um, direction. You know that that's not the direction you want. Okay, so that's the whole point of all of this. As much as it sounds sort of airy-fairy sometimes, you know, there is something as well about uh, making it very material. Everybody wears shoes. Everybody wears shoes. So, you know, um, we can go... Oh, I, I get it. You know, sometimes when we're in so much overwhelm, we actually need to have someone say, look, literally step into this pair of shoes and think this way. Force yourself to think like, you know, DSD, for example, do something different. You've got to do something different. If you've not, if you're not used to doing something different, if it's not comfortable for you, I can say to you, well, you could try something different. And you go, yep, yep. And I'm going, okay, how about you think that you are physically going to step into a pair of do something different shoes okay and you've got to think like that person you've got to walk like that person you're going to now I just want you to try it on actually think differently you've got to step into a physical pair of shoes that makes you think differently isn't it different to saying well you could think differently so there is a there is actually it makes it more um, tangible. It makes it more uh, material, and it brings it into the physical world. That makes it easier for yourself and for others. And this is something then you can also adjust it to teach your kids. Or you know, um, you'll get to a point where you'll start saying things like, okay, to your team, or once you're growing it, you know, like if you're in business, if you're a mumpreneur, if you're gonna be doing my um, Prosper Mums Club stuff, where, you know, I'm helping mums make, um, you know, recurring revenue from what they love, eventually you're going to get to a point where you probably will take people on board and you'll start going you know what guys we need to have our dsd shoes on now let's we, this isn't working everybody's going to understand what you're talking about if you're following this kind of thing you see so it's like oh yes i noticed that we're not being very flexible we need our flexibility shoes on and people go oh yes okay i physically have to think about stepping into those shoes and i have to act differently it helps them quickly step from one set to another set a lot easier than trying to just sort of move around the outskirts of that topic or try and you know ask a specific direction if you can actually go right these shoes are the ones that we need for this project or these are the ones that we need you know to get through this um challenge or if it's a, in a in a social environment or um you know maybe a familial environment you know like if it's your kid or whatever struggling with something you can say honey have you tried about you know maybe wearing these shoes oh i noticed this this and this so it makes them immediately go oh yeah I could. I could I could step into those shoes and if they're even struggling it also helps them to not struggle with it so you go well let's just pretend and when we pretend because we've got so much imagination it's so powerful you know you start coming up with answers that perhaps you wouldn't have answered before so um, or that you would have reached before because there was resistance if you go I know it's not comfortable wearing these, you know, DSD shoes, but let's just pretend that, you know, just for a short time, let's try them on and see if we come up with some solutions. And, you know, and then they can go, oh, okay, all right, well, I could do it if, if it's a short time. And that's what they'll find is like, oh, actually, yes, I've come up with solution one, two, three. Actually, I, I hadn't thought of it like that yet. That works. So it makes life a lot simpler when it's got a tangible thing. 
and feng shui and then it's like once you've pulled out all the things that aren't working for you you now got a nice set of shoes that you are comfortable wearing that you know you want to wear and that when you wear them it's on a path you actually want to go on so that if somebody comes along and says let's go this way you go let me think about that yes no yes on the same path no problem if it's not on my path that i actually want to go in then no no thank you Grace, you know, love love what you're doing, you know, sending you all the blessings and love that goes with it, but it's not really for me. But you get real clear, get real certain when you do this stuff. So I hope that answers, you know, that that, that whole concept of feng shui shoes, like, you know, actually knowing that that's the overarching thing that we're doing here so that it can relieve you from the overwhelm and stress that we all have been living with for uh, for far too long and we're on a mission to change that. So thank you again for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Namaste.